Well, what's up again there guys, Brian here at 3 Tier Hater bringing you the first of a series of end of the year top list videos. This one starting off with the top 10 worst movies that I saw in 2016. So jumping right into them, the first movie on the list is something that I don't think many people are going to be too surprised about, and that is X-Men Apocalypse. Now the problem I have with X-Men Apocalypse is I think it just kind of follows the same trend as a lot of movies do, or comic book movies do, in which the third installment is always the worst. And since this is kind of the ending, or the semi-ending to this second trilogy in the series, uh, I just think it falls under the same problems. It cannot live up to the success of its predecessors, that being Days of Future's Past. I thought that the setup to a lot of these events in this movie were just very badly handled. I think that the portrayal of Apocalypse was just laughable. I thought that the Four Horsemen and how they were used was just absolutely pathetic. I thought that the fact that they did not even really spend a lot of time adding any real Magneto and Charles Xavier scenes I thought was just very disappointing. The fact that a lot of the performances were very flat, especially coming from Jennifer Lawrence, who we can tell clearly does not want to be in this franchise anymore, really holds the film back. And though there are certainly a number of moments, especially some of the action scenes are pretty cool to watch, that's not enough to save this film. We've had plenty of Kung Book movies that have had very, very compelling storylines that have action scenes that back them up and enhance the experiences. So even though you may have a couple of cool scenes, if you don't have a good enough plot to surround that with, then it is going to suffer. And unfortunately, X-Men Apocalypse does. And that's why it is number 10 on this list. Going on to number 9 is, surprisingly, going to be Warcraft. Now, then I know that not everyone really disliked Warcraft, but the problem for me is that this is one of the very few video game based movies that I went into as more of a movie goer rather than a gamer. Uh, I didn't really know too much about the lore itself and I don't think that Warcraft really spent a lot of time explaining the lore of Warcraft and its rules and how certain characters and why they're so important in the backstory which I think when you really are starting up a franchise like this I think you need to spend a good amount of time setting that up at least maybe in the first act before you just kind of go off and do your own thing. And I thought that a lot of the CGI was not very good. A lot of scenes look at the came straight out of a video game cutscene which you would think you know, coming from a video game movie that's not a bad thing, but I think that when you have a high budget CGI movie like this, you need to make it look like a movie and not like a video game, and it just didn't do that a lot of times. I thought a lot of the action scenes were just very badly handled. I thought it was clear that you could tell they were standing in a blue room, uh, and it just was not very entertaining, and it failed at trying to convince me to want to become more invested in the story itself. That is probably the one thing that video game based movies try to do. If you're a movie goer, the movie should try to convince you that heck, if you really enjoyed the story, you might want to play the game in order to learn more. And unfortunately it didn't do that. And because of that, it kind of hurts the film in a whole. Now I'm not sure if this is going to get a sequel because I know it didn't do too well here in the States, but I think it did do a lot better over internationally. But if it does do that, I wouldn't mind spending another 10, 15 minutes kind of explaining things and how the new order is going to work or how the lore kind of influences all these characters. I wouldn't mind just a little bit more explanation. But heck, this time around, it just didn't work. And that's what really hurt the film for me. And that's why it's number nine on this list. Going into number eight is another video game based movie. and was actually the last movie I saw this year. And that was Assassin's Creed. Now, this movie commits the cardinal sin of doing the one thing I prayed it would not do. And that was, it spent more time in the present rather than focusing on anything that happened in the past. Now, when it was in the past, that was its strongest element because that is where most of the interesting moments are taking place. But anything that is happening in the present is boring. Most of the performances are completely flat. And I think that a number of these A-list actors should be ashamed of themselves because it is... The, the, they should know better. This type of movie is way below them. And I think they know that, which is why some of their performances just not, aren't that good. And the fact that I know pretty much the plot to the game series, and yet when they try to transfer it over to a movie, it just sounds dumber, really kind of makes me question the games themselves. So when you make a movie that makes the plot of the game seem so dumb, that's never a good thing. Which is kind of a sad thing because I really enjoy those games, or at least up to a certain point because I, I, I've stopped playing for some time. But sadly, the Assassin's Creed movie is just a bad interpretation. If you went into this movie expecting something good, you didn't get it. And if you are a fan of this series, then I hope you're going to be quite disappointed with this film, which is why it is number eight on this list. Going on into number seven, I picked Inferno. Now, I think that... I think that Ron Howard... And Tom Hanks, just stay away from this, this material. 
because I'm going to be honest, this is coming from someone who actually liked the Da Vinci Code and actually thought Angels and Demons was actually a pretty damn good film. But I think that going into a third movie was just not a good idea because the formula that had been running to the first two films just doesn't work this time around. And I think that the plot is so convoluted and some of the elements are so just insane that it's impossible to take it seriously and to the point where it be, kind of becomes almost a comedy. And when you're trying to tell a serious like story like this but it feels more of a comedy, that's never a good thing. And I think that moving forward, I think Ron Howard and Tom Hanks should just avoid doing any more of these movies. Now, I know that there's only one more book left, I believe, called The Lost Symbol, and I think that it no longer needs a film adaptation. Leave it as a book, and let's move on to other projects. So that is why it is number seven on this list. Going on into number six is Independence Day Resurgence. Now, I think the biggest problem that in this movie suffers is that they waited 20 years in order to do a sequel. Now, it's not to say that that couldn't have worked, but I don't think that you didn't have a lot of the major parts that made that first movie great. I mean, the fact that Will Smith was not in this movie was a serious death blow to this film because you had no real likable characters. And don't get me wrong, there were a lot of likable characters besides Will Smith in the first Independence Day, but in this movie, they're just not all that likable. And it's kind of hard to see that these characters that went through all these tragic events in the past are kind of a shell of themselves in the present, or at least in this film. And I think that the newer cast just don't add anything to it. It kind of gets kind of silly. I think some of the actions of the aliens are just pathetic. And I think that the setup to a possible third film was just flat out laughable to the point where I pray they don't do a third one because it's going to go into total bullshit comedy department and that is not what we need in terms of another independence day movie so please let it die here i will remember the first one as being a great movie of its time it still holds up at least to me but sadly its sequel completely fails and that is why it is number six on this list now going into number number five is a movie that i know i'm gonna get some serious flack for but i got my own personal problems with this movie it had i i, I went into it not expecting a lot and it ended up being worse especially when I saw it a second time with an extended cut and that was Batman vs Superman now you guys can quote me on this but I think this is the worst live-action film interpretation of Batman and Superman that I have ever seen this movie is worse than Batman and Robin and it is worse than Superman a quest for peace the problem that I have with this film is that Zack Snyder is clearly biting off more than he can chew. This movie has too many plot lines. The characters are completely unrecognizable. And there's no explanation for it. This movie is trying to do so much. It is trying to set up a Justice League movie so badly. It can't do any movie right. I mean, we're, we're not sure if it's supposed to be a, a, a story about Superman, about uh, the world trying to understand what he's all about and him trying to prove himself. We're not sure if it's about Batman who feels that Superman is a threat and he needs to take him out. We're not sure if this is about bullshit Desi Eisenberg playing God knows who he is because he damn sure ain't Lex Luthor. And then you got Lois Lane with this plot line here. And then you bring Wonder Woman in here. And then you got Doomsday out of nowhere. And it it it's a mess. This movie is a mess. And the fact that people had the balls to go on record and say, Oh, you need to watch the extended cut. You need to, It has an extra 30 minutes that explains some things. Well, I watched the extended cut. And all I got to say is, three hours for that? Three hours? And I get this? You must be out of your fucking mind about this three-hour mess. Zack Snyder clearly has no respect for the source material, and it is clear that no one in Warner Brothers' head department knows a goddamn idea what they are doing. This is a train wreck on the move, and I have no faith in any more movies coming out from the DC Cinematic Universe. The only movie I plan on seeing moving forward is Ben Affleck's Batman film because he is seems to be the only one taking this seriously. I'm damn sure not going to be seeing Wonder Woman. I'm going to be avoiding that movie like the plague. And as long as Zack Snyder is driving this sinking ship, I have no faith in Justice League. I mean, if he can fuck up the Trinity, I don't even want to know what he's going to do with the Justice League. Oh my god, I mean, people like to say that Fox should give up its rights of the X-Men and just give them to Disney. 
I think it would be better if Warner Brothers just sold its rights and gave them to Disney. I would love to see what Disney would do with these characters because it is clear that without Christopher Nolan to hold their hand, Warner Brothers doesn't know at all what they're doing. I was severely disappointed and the fact that there are people backing this movie up that call themselves fans makes it that much more insulting and that's why it's number five on this list. Going into number four, we get into joke shit territory. And they and there is no other movie that more illustrates this than Gods of Egypt. This is a parody. It is a terrible CGI hour and a half long parody with performances that are so bad, they are so over the top, that it's laughable. Gerard Butler, I think he's a I think he's a cool guy. I really do. I like some of his movies. But his performance made Leonidas from 300 look like Shakespeare. And I thought the CGI was just horrible. And the characters were just cartoon characters to the point where any action scene I just couldn't it just it looked bad. It was some of the worst blue or green screen I have seen all here. And I think that there are some people that are just fighting to hating this because of all the whitewashing. I, I think that it needed a much better cast because these guys clearly just did not look like they belong there. It was it, this is probably the worst casted movie I've seen to date that's supposed to be a period piece. And that's why it's number four on this list. Going on to number three is probably a movie that I hoped would be entertaining, but it wasn't. And I should have expected it. And that is Zoolander 2. This is an example of an outdated movie that came out too late. Now I love the first Zoolander. I think it's a funny movie. But it is a movie of its time. A lot of the jokes in this movie are so outdated. You can tell that this should have come out maybe a year or two years after the first movie. The fact that they waited so long, it really suffers. And I'm sorry, some of these jokes just no longer work. I thought some of the performances were just lackluster. Some of these elements no longer work. And having so many cameos just made it very distracting. Ben Stiller, you are a product of your time. You kind of suffer the same fate as a lot of the old classic comedians like Jim Carrey or Mike Myers where or, or Adam Sandler dear God is which the jokes that you told back in the day just don't work you need some new material or do something new you are a good actor you have done some movies recently that I really enjoy and you've done some movies in the past that I really enjoy and still enjoy them today but you got to let these type of characters go you need some new material or you need to update it seriously and sadly zoolander 2 refuses to do that and that's why it's number three on this list now we go into number two which this was probably the most sh shocking movie i saw this year because i really thought going into this movie it was going to be i was going to be one film and it ended up being something else this movie, without question, has the worst case of false advertising I've ever seen for a movie in some time. And that is called Collateral Beauty. Holy shit, if you've seen the trailers for this, it is completely misleading. Now, Will Smith has always been one of my favorite actors. And I heard that, you know, because he lost his dad this year, that this movie was kind of... For people who've lost a loved one, and I lost my dad this year too, so I thought this was going to be a movie that, you know, might help people through their pain. No. This is the most despicable, disgusting plot for a film I've ever seen. With characters who are just disgusting and horrible human beings. Now, I can't, I'm not going to say what this movie did wrong. But I think that if you go to someone who's willing to talk about spoilers and you hear the actual plot of this movie, which is not much of a spoiler because they tell you exactly what they're doing, you will find it very disrespectful for people who've gone through tough times like this. And the fact that I went to this blind made it all the more worse. Everyone who's associated with this film of cast, director, and script writers should be ashamed of themselves that they want to attach themselves to this product. I was shocked, I was horrified, and I was disappointed with everyone, including Will Smith. He should have known better. I don't know why he signed on to this, but he, 
better give me something better next year. Because this is probably the worst movie I've seen him in, period. It's one of those movies that supposedly is going to give him the Oscar or give him some, you know, awards nominations. But uh, no. Oh, God, no. And if I just piqued your interest because of my reaction toward this film, please, please don't. Don't watch it. Please. It is that bad. But as bad as Collateral Beauty is, that's only number two. The worst movie I saw this year should not be a shock to any of you. Because it was the most disliked trailer of all year. And that is Ghostbusters. Oh my god. This was a fucking horror show. Ghostbusters is probably one of the most iconic comedy movies in cinema history. And the fact that this studio would do such disrespect to the franchise is horrifying. Now, I'm not going to come on camera and say it was all because it was all women because I, I have no problems with that. Hell, I would have been fine if they had done a Ghostbusters movie, a true sequel to the original two Ghostbusters movies that had female Ghostbusters. I would have been fine if there had been two female Ghostbusters and two male Ghostbusters. Show them working together. Don't just give everyone sex changes. Don't do that. Especially when you have four main actresses that I, I don't think are funny at all. I mean, people say these actresses are funny in their own stuff, but I, I don't think they're funny at all. This movie was not funny. And the fact that they had the balls to make a... Th this is pretty much a carbon copy of the first film. I went through the same goddamn problem with Star Wars The Force Awakens, which is why that was the worst movie I saw last year. The only reason I didn't say it was because at the time I knew if I had said that, I'd have a lot of people coming after me with torches and pitchforks wanting to hang my ass. So I'm not afraid to say that this is the worst movie I saw this year. This would definitely fall into the category of not just being the worst movie I saw in 2016, but being in at least the top five worst movies I've ever fucking seen in my life. I am glad this movie bombed. I hope we never see anything like this for this franchise. Let it die. I will stick to the two movies that already came out. And hell, as far as I know, the video game, the Ghostbusters video game, which I believe came out in 2009, is the true Ghostbusters 3 movie. It's fine just the way it is. The studio should be ashamed of themselves for what they did. Because... If you really want to make a movie for little girls being inspired to be Ghostbusters, they deserve better than this. And I just feel bad because they're not smart enough to realize what shit was sold to them. And that there are actually people defending this is all the more disrespectful. And that is my list of the top 10 worst movies I saw in 2016. Now please, share your list with me. What were some of the worst movies that you saw in 2016? Share your list with me and everybody else in the comments down below. And if you like this video, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to keep track of me in my future videos. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I will see you next time.